To make truly modern, maintainable, and scalable websites, you have to use things like custom post types and custom fields. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Etch's loops, logic, and dynamic data capabilities so that you can see how fast and simple this is and how quickly the builder renders dynamic data as you're working. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Uh, let's make sure we're good to go. We are. I'm going to I'm gonna just go through one very simple example, and then I will do a follow-up video because a lot of people have been asking about WooCommerce, and they probably think there's etches. They haven't even started working on WooCommerce functionality. There's no possible way they could potentially create a product card and loop through the products and have the dynamic data all populate with the regular price, the sale price, the product description, the product image, all of that. Well, that is already possible in Etch. And I will do a follow-up video for that. I'm going to start out with a non-e-commerce example, something that probably people will build on every single website just to show you how quick and easy this is. So I'm going to go to ACF and you're going to notice that I have some custom post types, one being team. Well, actually, this is post types right here, my team. And then field groups, I have some custom fields assigned to the team for their title and their bio. Of course, if we go to team and we look at some of these team members, we're going to see I put their name in the post title field. Then they have this team member title, which is actually a select box to choose what their like title is, like sales or human resources or marketing or whatever. You could put, you could say department, like whatever you wanted to do. Uh, and then I put in their bio and then we have their featured image and the featured image spot. And what I need to do is I need to make a grid for our team members. And this is going to require a loop and it's gonna require pulling this data dynamically into the card that I create inside of that loop. And I wanted to just start with a simple example because I do wanna go slow and make sure that nobody is left behind, okay? So I'm gonna go pages, I'm gonna go uh, home, we're gonna edit with etch, we have a blank slate, I'm gonna start with a section. Inside that section, I'm gonna drop in a heading and that's just gonna say, meet our team. I'm gonna drop in another container below. This is going to be my grid. Now, I do wanna pause here and say, in the near future, you will be able to create custom post types and custom fields, do conditional field logic, and even do things like bi-directional relationships with custom fields natively in Etch. You will not need advanced custom fields. You will not need Metabox. You will not need any add-ons to manage this. This will be native functionality inside of Etch for all plan levels. This is part of our commitment to building what we call a unified visual development environment. You should not have to leave Etch to go create a custom post type. That is a critical part of the workflow. You should not have to leave Etch to go create custom fields. That is a critical part of the workflow. You will be able to make those things in line in the interface while you're doing all of your other work. You never have to context switch. You never have to go to a magic area. All of this happens inside of Etch. But for right now, we do have uh, ACF installed so that we can we can we can get something going right and and this shows the integration with third party tools that is already happening. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this the team grid. I'm gonna go ahead and add a flex div here. This is gonna be my team card. And I'm gonna make a really simple card. We're gonna do an image, we're gonna do a heading, that's gonna be their name, then their title, and then their bio. So I'm gonna call this title, I'm gonna call this bio, I'm gonna call this name, I'm gonna call this avatar, and then I have my team card right here. Now, I am going to right click create BIM classes. This is going to create the styling classes for all of these elements automatically based on their name. I've shown this in the past videos, okay? Um, next thing I'm gonna do is we'll just add some simple styling, okay? So like for the title right here, I want this to be smaller text. So I'm gonna say text S. I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard so I can do the same thing for bio as well. And then this heading, I want this to actually reference my H4 font size. Even though it's gonna stay, actually I want that to be an H3. So I'm gonna just change the tag really quick right there. Um, all right, so that is all fine and dandy. What I'm gonna do is grab my team card. We're gonna set this to display flex and flex direction of column. My gap is going to be a card gap. You'll see the CSS auto authoring itself down here with the bi-directional sync. 
Uh, I'm just kind of pointing out things. If you haven't watched every single video, you may not know exactly what's going on. I'm gonna use a placeholder, just static placeholder for right now. And this will be the person's name. This will be their title. And this will be their bio. I am not focusing on design in this video, okay? I'm not gonna do a bunch of fancy little details. I am focusing on functionality of loops and dynamic data. That is our mission in this video. Okay, I have four team members, so what I need is a four column grid. So I'm gonna grab my grid right here. I'm gonna add a class called team grid to this. We'll display this as a grid, and I wanna say grid auto four, okay? Grid auto four, if I can type properly. Now you're not gonna see it turn into a four column grid because auto grids, uh, they auto fill. And so if there's only one thing, it'll take up all the space. But as I add more, it will then put them in their grid slots. It's very dynamic. This is great for like, if you have uh, four, but it might be three, but it might be, uh, you know, you might need two rows, whatever. It's, it's just gonna fill itself out nice and evenly. Okay, so the next thing, and that's just something from ACSS. We don't even have to, you know, focus on those details. You can make a grid however you want to make a grid in Etch. This is just the way that I do it because it's very fast, it's very easy, and it's very effective. All right, so the thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a component because I know people are wondering, well, okay, you can loop static stuff, like, but can you loop a component? That would be even cooler if you could loop a component. Well, yes, yes, we can loop a component. So let's make a component. We're going to right-click, create component. I now have a team card component. What is the first step, class, on creating a component? Well, after you right click and create component, you have to create the props. We need, an, we need a text prop, a text prop, a text prop, that's three, and we need an image prop, okay? So we're gonna go one, two, three, and image. This is going to be called name. This is going to be called title. I'm just doing this, name, title, bio, okay? This is gonna be called bio. If you haven't watched my components video, you should go watch it. Components are very, very, very powerful. This is gonna be called avatar. I'm gonna choose my default avatar right here, and then I'm gonna click, click, and that's gonna map that to that prop area, okay? Bio goes here, title goes here, name goes here, it's that easy. I'm gonna hit save, there's my card, there's my component, it's all propped up and it's ready to go. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to get our loop going. Because I need to pull in, I can't just have one card here, I have to have four cards but I can't duplicate this card and just make four of them. That's static. That's not what I want to do. I want to be dynamic. I want to loop through all of our team members. And in the future, if we add more team members, this grid, this page will populate itself. It will keep itself up to date as I delete people from the back end, as I add new people in the back end, I will never have to touch this again. It will just manage itself. That's the beauty of dynamic data. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on team grid and for the very first time, you are going to see the loop in action. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna click this little thing that looks, in fact, quite like a loop, okay? I'm gonna click it, it's gonna add a loop element to the page, I'm gonna drag my team card inside of it, and now I have my loop. And I can name this right here, I can say team members, okay? Just whatever, it's just, it's that doesn't, it doesn't affect anything, it's just for you, for organization purposes. Okay, notice right away that it's looping and it's like turned into three things because we have some default loops going on down here. And this is our V1 loop editor, which gives you access to the PHP um, arguments, which is fantastic for advanced people. But I know it scares beginners to absolute death. So I wanna pause here and I wanna say, for beginners, we are going to have a level two loop editor that is a nice, super friendly, easy to use UI. And you'll just click, 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 click and configure your loop and it'll, it'll make total sense to you. However, everybody else may love using this because it's so fast and it's so powerful and it has no limitations. And you can even ask Grok to write these arguments for you or Claude or your favorite LLM um, you know, friend. Right? Okay. So what I want to do is I want to loop through my team. Oh, look at that. It turned into four because there's four team members instantly. I want you to notice the instant rendering as I go through this. Okay. It is very fast. There is no lag, nothing to slow you down, nothing to get in your way. I want to change this to eight, even though we don't have eight, but you know, if we added more in the future, it would expand to at least eight here before it starts to paginate or uh, some other method of handling extra people. And that's really all we need to do. Now what I, what I have to do next is instead of statically putting content in here, like Jake, Okay, which is clearly gonna write Jake 
four times. Well, I don't wanna do that. I need dynamic data. I gotta reach into those custom fields that I created in ACF. I gotta reach into them and I gotta somehow pull out their data. Now I'll pause right here and say that what you are about to watch me do is not the proposed workflow. This is V1 of dynamic data, V1.1 of dynamic, like very soon, very, very soon. There's gonna be icons on these inputs. You click them, it's gonna show you the keys that are available, and then you just click, 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 and it maps it, and you're done, okay? You don't have to do what I'm about to do, but we, we're not there yet. I, I, I'm treating you guys right now the way we have treated our customers in the development process. We don't wait until everything is picture perfect. Every single week, we release what is available, and you get to look at the new things, the new capabilities. You're not seeing the final end game of everything, but you're getting to touch, feel, play with, exactly what is available new that week. And that is really, really fun. And it gets us feedback very quickly and it allows us to iterate very quickly. And obviously it's been a very successful process up to this point. Okay, so let's just get some dynamic data. I'm gonna do this dot title just to show you how easy this is. Still not hard, it's still not hard. I wanna explain the word this in just a minute, but I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna keep going. So I want this dot, ooh, this is the person. So this was the post title. This is the person's actual title. And if we go back here, I just wanna show you this as a reference. I go to field groups, I go to team. These keys that ACF makes, those are the keys you're going to reference. So team member title, that's all I have to do is reference that but I have to have one extra step. This dot meta, because ACF uh, puts this stuff in meta fields. And um, what is it, team member title? Look at that, there's the team member title right here. Now I can copy that and paste it down here and just change title to bio, and now the bio's in. And guys, we have made some awesome team member cards. We are looping, we are doing dynamic, oh, we don't have their images, silly me, okay? I'm gonna come down here, this dot featured image, now we have all of their images just like that. Instant rendering. I'm gonna show you on the front end too so that you can be extra impressed. I want you to notice this. First of all, my team grid, double click. Now an unordered list. Team card, I wanna edit component. I wanna come in here. I wanna make these list items, okay? I'm gonna save my component. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go to the front end. Oh, it looks like our team grid uh, needs a gap, okay? Uh, let's go to gap and grid gap, just like that. All right, let's save. Let's go to the front end. And let's take a little look-see, okay? Right click, inspect, and exactly what you would expect to see, it is clean as an absolute whistle. Guys, this is loops, looping components. What evidence, let me ask you a question. What evidence is there that this is a loop? What evidence is there that these are components being looped? Do you see a single extra wrapper? Do you see a single piece of extra code that would let you know that any of that is happening? Or do you only see the bare minimum that you actually need to see to properly render this page. Etch output is as clean as a whistle, okay? So let's go back in. I wanna explain one thing to you real quick, and that is the word this. And I also wanna point you to hwp.com slash blog. I would highly recommend you click this and read about the perfect loop architecture, okay? Um, and this site is not built with etch, by the way. All right, I, I saw a problem we're having with our uh, table of contents element, apparently. Uh, this is built in bricks. Uh, so don't pay attention to that. Read the actual content, because that's what you came for. That's the important part, this content over here on the left-hand side. It's very important to understand how some methods of looping are better than other methods of looping. We're gonna have nested loops. You can use condition if blocks inside of loops. You can check the condition of dynamic data. You can check the condition of props. You can, it is so insanely powerful and this is only level one, okay? Let me explain the this thing, okay? This.title, this.meta, this.meta, this.featured image. When you click the loop, Okay, the default, so I'm gonna click on this loop right here. The default says loop recent posts as this, okay? Oh, did I not, I didn't even show you guys why this says recent posts. We need to change this. I, I totally forgot about this. You save this as your team loop. All you gotta do is double click that and change it to team and you're done. And you can, look, you can create as many of these 
queries as you want. You can delete them from here. Super simple, super easy. But now I have saved my team loop just like this. And notice it's saying loop team as this, okay? I, if you're doing a simple one layer loop, I would just leave the word this in there and just do this dot everything. This dot title, this dot da 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 da. But if you're gonna do nested loops, you want a little bit more flexibility, you want a little bit more organization, you want it to make a little bit more sense. So what you do is you grab the loop and you say loop team as whatever you want. It can be team, loop team as member, loop team as person. Like I could say loop team as person, okay? Now all of that dynamic data is gonna go away, why? Because we're saying this dot title, this dot meta, but now I can come in and say person, okay? Person dot meta, person, person dot featured image, all my di dynamic data comes back. And then if I was going to have a nested loop, I could loop that as whatever it needed to be looped by. And I can have, I can have unique keys for those loops so that everything stays nice and organized. There's no collisions of dynamic data or anything like that. Once again, another layer to how powerful these loops are going to be. And uh, that's it. I wanna, I wanna cut this video short. I don't wanna spend too much time. We're at the 17 minute mark, that's about right. Uh, like I said, I will do a follow-up video to this where I show you that we are already able to create product cards from WooCommerce products. We are already to put the, already able to put the dynamic data in for those. You can have the sale price, you can have the regular price, you can have all the fields that are available. Uh, you can use conditional logic to say, hey, if it has a sale price, I only wanna show products that are on sale. I don't wanna show products that are not on sale. So I could, I could create a grid that is products on sale, only show products that are on sale with our conditional logic. That is all possible and working right now inside of Etch. I'll do a follow-up video. If you love this, and I'm so sorry if I lost you, I feel like I'm talking fast. I, I really hope if you're a beginner that you, I didn't lose you along the way. I wanna reiterate that I will be doing a page building 101. I already did this course once, but I'm going to redo it for everybody. I'm gonna make it um, even more granular and modular, which means the episodes are gonna be even shorter. It's all gonna be redone in Etch. And I am going to guide you through all of these fundamentals, step by step, at a slow pace that you can follow along with. You are, we are, all we do is elevate people's game. That's what we do. We give you better tools. We give you better education. And along the way, you get better pricing. You get more money. You get more success. Good things happen to you. When you stick around us, good things happen to you, okay? Uh, like the video, comment on the video, make sure you've got a copy of Etch. I mean, it's ridiculous that, that, that if you're still on the fence, I mean, after all of this, you've seen all of this, you're still on the fence, uh, I don't know what to tell you. All, all I can say is in September, it's probably gonna be more expensive. The LTDs might not even be there in September. We don't know yet, we don't know yet. Now is the time to get in, okay? Now is the time to get, you gotta, you gotta get off the fence. If, if, if what you're seeing, you're not connecting the dots on this stuff, again, I don't know what to tell you, but we'll be back more stuff to look at, more education to be had. I love you guys. Thanks for the support. Share this around. Peace.